welcome. I hope you're doing well. My name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily, my podcast, vlog, whatever you want to call it, all about knitting and cross stitch. Today is November 23rd, 2020 and I have a knitting episode for you this week. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me and if you're returning, I appreciate you coming back as well. I do alternate between my knitting and cross stitch videos, so this week is a knitting episode, next week will be a cross stitch episode, and so on and so forth. Before we jump on in, I do have two little things that I need to tell you. The first being uh, where you can find me on the internet. The first is on Instagram at birch.and.lily, and the second is on Ravelry at Birch and Lily. The other announcement that I have is the giveaway winner. Last knitting episode I was giving away a pair of these beautiful sock blockers from the Sleepy Chickadee and I did draw a winner uh, right before I started recording this. Now hopefully I see your name right, um, but Brianna Wallen, if you could please contact me at my email um, with your mailing address and all that fun stuff, I will get this sent off to you. I'm so excited for you. They're beautiful blockers and I really love mine. So now that that is all said and done, let's jump into what I have been working on these past couple weeks. I will preface this with, I think I gave myself tennis elbow. Um, so I haven't really been knitting much, cross stitch hasn't hurt it, so I've been stitching a lot and leaving my knitting to the side. I don't know what I did, honestly. <laughs> but anyways, I have done a couple things. I actually got really far on a project that you guys haven't seen just yet, so let's jump on in. So this first project is in a bag from Jibby Roo Sews, and there we have it, nice and cute and Christmassy. And this is the project that I was talking about that I cast on since last episode, and I've got really, really far on. So this is the yarn that I'm using for this project. I think this might have been a club colorway, so I'm not sure if it's available anymore. Um, but this is from Barnyard Knits, their 7525 base in the colorway Sweet Berries. And I am knitting a flax light sweater. I am knitting this up for my niece, so it is an itty bitty little size, and that is why I have got so far on it. But this is where I am. Oh my gosh, it looks even cuter on camera than it does in person. <laughs> um, so I am actually knitting the 6 to 12 month size for this, I think. Um, I figured I would do something a little bit bigger so that it lasts her even longer, hopefully. Um, and maybe she can wear it this winter and next. We'll see. Um, or it may just look really massive on her and we'll get a kick out of it. <laughs> so the whole body is done and I have picked up and started on the first little sleeve, barely started. Um, and yeah. This progress keeper is literally just marking the front of the project. This is Sucre Sucre Miniatures puts out a gingerbread house usually every Christmas. And I think this was last year's gingerbread house. So let's go into the stats, I guess, for this project. I am using two needle sizes. Um, the first being the ribbing needle, which is a US 2.5, which is a three millimeter needle. And then for the body of the project, the sleeves, all of that stuff, I am using a US 5, which is a 3.75 millimeter needle. Um, and like I said, I cast on the six to 12 month size. I am pretty much on gauge when I measured. Now, obviously this is gonna grow some when I block it and whatever, that's fine. Like I said, it's for a baby. <laughs> so like I want it to look cute, but I don't care about the sizing that much because they grow so fast. So um, I did only change one thing on this. The pattern does call for a one by one rib and I ended up doing a two by two rib. It did not work out on the bottom for me and I had two extra stitches and I just ended up decreasing them when I got to them. So you can't even really you can't tell. Um, and it's not going to make that much of a difference in the garment. It's still very stretchy at the bottom. I used, I think it's just called the super stretchy bind off. Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off does not work for me. It is a disastrous mess. Um, so yeah, I think this is called the super stretchy bind off and that is what I used for the bottom. And I cast on with a German twisted cast on, which I find is extra stretchy as well. Um, 
And then the sleeves have this really cute garter texture running down them. Yeah, this sweater is wonderful. I've never knit a flax light before. I don't think I mentioned who it's by. It's by Tin Can Knits. I will always, always link all of the patterns down below. Um, so if I do miss saying anything, it should probably be down there. But this pattern is amazing. It is free and it is available all the way from baby to adult sizes. So I may have to cast myself one on. I really like how simple it is. And the garter texture on the sleeves is so cute. So I think a couple more days of knitting and I could probably get this done. I worked on the body for probably two or three days. I did start it on different needle sizes because I didn't gauge swatch and then the head was way too tiny and no baby's head would fit through it and I had to rip all of the top of this out. I had almost to where I split for the sleeves and I ripped it all up. But that's what I get for not gauge swatching. So that is my own fault. Um, but yeah, and the other thing I should say, this is a raglan sweater. So you do these increases to get your little sleeve cap. The pattern is wonderful. If you haven't knit a sweater before, honestly, this would be a good place to start because it's very simple. The instructions are very straightforward. It's a great sweater. So yeah, hopefully this fits my niece. I can't see why it wouldn't. And I'm also hoping, which I think I should, I sh I'll weigh this later, but I'd like to make a hat out of this too. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it is the newest hat pattern that Lindsay Fowler of Lost and Found released. Um, and it uses a main color and then a little contrast color to double line the brim of it. And I believe, I'm like 99% sure that it comes in baby to adult sizes as well. So if I was to do have enough yarn to do that and the pattern, works in said way that is what I'm thinking of using for the contrast color making a little matching toque so we'll see where I get with that but that is probably what I've worked the most on lately because it doesn't aggravate my elbow as much and it's just simple and I don't have to think so really really enjoying this obviously you can tell because it's flying and let's jump into something you have seen before. I swear I've been working on these for forever. This bag is from Studio in the Green. I do not think they're making bags anymore. I was following them on Instagram. I think I still am. Um, and they haven't posted anything about bags in quite some time, but perfect little sock size bag. Uh, these are my Humbug Socks by Ambrose Smith. I am knitting these out of Good For You yarn. Uh, they're Kettle Steps base. There's Baby Llama in here. What is in here? I can't remember. Forty percent Superwash Merino, forty percent Baby Llama, and twenty percent Nylon. So that Baby Llama definitely gives it a little bit of a halo. Um, it's really nice and soft, crazy soft. Um, very, very happy with it. And I think I said last episode, but I got this at a yarn show for like 10 bucks a skein. It was very reasonably priced. Yeah, I don't know if you can see the halo there, but it's super soft and wonderful. And like I said, I'm knitting the Humbug Socks by Ambrose Smith. Do I have a sock blocker? These are a Christmas gift, and I have one sock finished, so I'm going to put it on a blocker while I'm talking here, as I put it on the blocker backwards. Um, these are a Christmas knit, gift knit, and they are for a first time hand knit sock receiver. So I wanted to make sure that they were nice and snug in the cuff, with a little bit more room in the foot, just more of a slipper sock. Um, mostly because I have never knit socks for them before and I only have their shoe size. I don't have anything else to work off of, no measurements, anything like that. These are a surprise, that is basically why. Um, 
But first sock is done. I cast on 64 stitches for these socks on 2.25 millimeter US 1 needles. And that's where I was last time. So I didn't really have tons left. I believe the pattern called for a 2x2 two two rib, but there was like garter instead of purl stitches, which I, I just wanted to do the 2x2 two two so that it was nice and snug. Um, so that is what I did for that. Slip stitch, heel flap, and gusset. I think the pattern did call for that. And then, yeah, just kept going wedge toe. Pretty happy with that. Um, so I am working on the second sock. The leg is almost done. So that is where I am with the second sock. The pattern is very easy and memorizable. I've said this every single episode, um, but you memorize it very quickly and it's very easy. So I do like that. If I want to think a little bit, but not too much when I'm watching TV. Yeah. Anyways, working on the second sock, I need to get these done by Christmas. So they've kind of been on my radar a lot too. Um, I did try and work on them today, but it was bugging my elbows. So they got put away. And one final knitting project. And then I do have some yarn to show you for something that I will be casting on after this episode, hopefully. See how my elbow feels. Maybe not. Anyways, these are in a bag from the Scrappy Thread. This is another pair of socks. Um, you can find this pattern in the 52 Weeks of Socks book by Lina Magazine. They are the Craspedia Socks by Andrea Mowry. And I am knitting these up out of some of my deep stash. <laughs> this is Hey Sister Yarn Co. They are not dyeing yarn anymore, which makes me very sad. They also used to record a podcast um, as well on YouTube, and they haven't been doing that anymore either. But... They both have a lot of children and they're very busy, so I totally understand. But this is some of the yarn of theirs that I have been hoarding so that, I don't know. I don't know why I was hoarding it, but I was hoarding it. So this is called Tea and Cake. Um, it's beautiful, kind of like a blush pink. There's some green speckles in here. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And the mini skein that I'm using with it, I don't think it came as a sock set. I believe this was just like a free gift from them at some point. Um, but this is beautiful as well. No name for this. Don't know what it's called. Um, and yeah, I cast on these socks maybe last week. They are toe up, which is usually not normal for me, but I thought I would be brave. And I did try a new cast on for the toe on this that I really really like which kind of makes me think I want to do more toe up socks. I just really love how beautifully rounded that toe is. Like you don't get that from a cuff down sock nor did I get that using the what is it called Judy's Magic cast on. Never looked like this. Um, this is the Turkish cast on and I did use, Andrea Maori does have a tutorial for it on her YouTube channel. Um, so I did use that. It was wonderful and it helped me a lot and I'm really, really happy with how that toe looks. So I am knitting these on 2.25 millimeter needles, US one. Um, and I think this sock is 59 stitches. I believe there was like a 59 stitch option and then a 78 or something like that and that worried me about being too big so I figured if these were a little tiny I can just block them stretch them when I block them so this is what they look like I love them so much so these guys here are baubles. I did knit them using the crochet method and I do find I prefer them that way if I turn this sideways you can see they actually stick out. Um, when I used to knit bobbles the knitting way, knitting way, I guess, um, they always sunk back into the fabric and I never liked how they looked. Um, but again, Andrea Mowry has a tutorial on her YouTube channel on how to do them with a crochet hook. And I am so happy with how they look when I do them that way. So I really don't think I have much farther to go on this foot until I'm ready to put in the heel. So yeah, that shouldn't take me too long at all. And I really like these. They kind of brought my knitting mojo back. I want to knit now, but I can't because of my elbow. 
isn't that the way it always goes? I swear. Um, anyways, yarn that I'm going to be using hopefully to cast on tonight. I am testing a pattern out of this yarn. Um, and I believe I can show it so you'll definitely see it next episode. Another Birch Grove bag. This yarn is from Explorer Knits and Fibers. Yes. Ah, uh, what is this sock set called? I can't remember. I wound this up so long ago and it's just been sitting there. Um, Aspens in Fall and Ember. So this is on her 8020 base. And I will hold it up for you in a moment once I get this little tag back in. Ball band. That's what they're called. <laughs> Anyways, so this is Aspens in Fall. It's this beautiful, like, gray base with almost, they're like rust sort of speckles. Very pretty. And then the mini is basically those rust speckles. So I will be casting on said test knit out of this yarn. Let me check what it's called. One second. Okay, I checked my computer. <laughs> uh, these are called the Strozzi, Strozzi, I don't fully know how to pronounce it, but I'll put it across the screen. Socks, it is a pattern by the New York Year, and she is hoping to have them released by the end of December, so definitely keep an eye out for that, and I will share updates for you here on me knitting them, as well as on my Instagram. So, yeah. That is basically everything I had to show you guys this episode. I hope you enjoyed. Um, Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new, if you're not, it means a lot. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It helps me out um, by getting my video out there to other people. Uh, liking the video also does that as well. I know sometimes we forget to like, but it literally takes like one second and it means a lot to me and it definitely helps get my video out there to other people. Um, so yeah, I upload videos every Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern time alternating between knitting it and cross stitch. So next week is cross stitch. And yeah, if you have any questions, please ask me down below. I'd be happy to help you out. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.